The art of Massimo D'Amico, Italian artist living in the Czech Republic, is hard to categorize. The artwork he sells on Saatchi art leads one to think of politico, economic, and psychological commentary. He paints with playful colors, and there is a depth to his abstract images. And then, on his Instagram, we see another side of D'Amico's work, light-hearted, precise, yet unfinished. I imagine him sitting by a canal in Prague, selling to passerby. How are you, Massimo? No bad, no bad. How's going good? You're an Italian artist living in Prague? Uh, yes. Uh, actually, now I'm living in Brno. That is uh, the second city of Czech Republic. But I used to live there many years and uh, still have a studio there. But now I'm living here. I have family. Your family is in the Czech Republic with you? Yeah, exactly, yes. And nobody's in Italy anymore? No, actually, I have uh, parents, brothers in a little town, South Italy, quite cool place, like summer resort or is in the coast, Capri Island, Capri. Oh yes. Pompeii, that is the area, you know. I'm on the Amalfi Coast. And you decided to go to school in Naples to study art. Exactly, yes. I moved there when I was uh, 17 or 18. I moved in Naples to study their uh, arts. I needed to learn. I wanted to see artworks. I want to understand what is what does mean art and stuff. That is the things that help me a lot, you know, this kind of energy and uh, to to move a step forward, you know. And after Naples, you moved to New York. No, actually, after Naples, I went to. Barcelona in Actually, Spain. Um, Mas Massimo, can you move your camera just a little bit? Because we can. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, perfect. Uh, I finished my studying there in Naples, the the fine arts, and then I have uh, this kind of dream to move in uh, some community, you know, because I was reading about Paris communities of uh, 20th century, beginning of 20th centuries, or uh, New York commu art community in Greenwich Village in the 60s, you know, stuff like this. I was totally, my head was full of dreams, but actually I was still young and not too much experience to traveling. So I chose uh, the first city, big city close to Italy. And so I moved to Barcelona. The, at that time was uh, quite cool, you know, it was a nice city, too much attractions for a young man, you know. But I was working as artist. I did some exhibitions there. and But Barcelona was very important for me because I understood which was my path, you know, my, my vision about art and what I, I want to say and what I need from art. I had an exhibition in a art gallery, official one. The owner told me, no, look, you can keep the paintings one month more because we have still space and stuff like this. But uh, I decided with my colleagues to take all the paintings out in the street, in the metro, to bring art to the people, you know reading poems was a kind of it at that time was called uh, uh, art terrorism well terrorism was a still <laughs> you know a simple and uh, simple word not much <laughs> attention on it and it uh, was pretty fun you know because uh, many people around and the lines behind us still growing you know when we walk in the ramblas in these roads of barcelona under the metro some poets with us and that was a very beautiful thing that inspired me a lot you know in my career you say that in barcelona you found the direction of your artwork but you have two different sort of bodies of work your instagram shows landscapes and buildings and colorful like boats and then on your Saatchi, yeah, yeah. it's more yeah like actually it. yeah uh, yeah, I, I, I start to paint watercolor in Prague, actually, because it's a beautiful city, but uh, it's still a young city, so about the culture or the art market is still not poor, but young, you know what I mean? Like, it needs time. It's, 
It's a small city and uh, the, the, the galleries there are not so uh, with an international feeling. You know what I mean? Like It's like uh, they want to support their own artists for sure. But for a foreigner, it's pretty tough. You, you need uh, like um, uh, a structure behind you or a supporter or uh, you need money. Uh, you know, a backpack, something like this. <laughs> because they accept the project, but, but from uh, institutions. The, the city inspired me to change a little bit my vision I, because actually I, I always I was found to paint uh, alive, you know. I was sketching in metros, in the squares, in New York, in wherever I used to live. So for me it was easy to switch the, for uh, plain air, watercolor, um, to paint among people is quite adrenalinic, you know. And uh, that is why I have these two different styles. But I still have my own research. And uh, actually watercolors was very helpful because now with all these uh, crazy things around, it's very, very easy to, to sell on internet, you know what I mean? Like small, on paper, and uh, easy to ship, you know, it's different than a big painting or uh, a big sculpture. And so your sales online, you're very active on Saatchi art. Are you ah, saying? yes, yes. Um, I, I, I get like a kind of contracts with them. But I don't like too much to stay under a gallery. I was always uh, working by my own uh, without uh, any structure behind me, managers or uh, no big network. When, actually, when I went in New York, I was a pretty naive guy, you know, but I was going to the galleries and uh, show show my work you know without any barriers and f for the, the galleries or the, the the people working there it was a pretty shocking you know because maybe it was a, a way a hold way because now you 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 have to sell send emails or some presentations or you need your manager or I, what, whatever but like this, I was uh, like, you know, not, not crazy, but something creative. And I remember I went in this Monk Dogs Gallery in Chelsea. And during an exhibition, I put my, my small sketches, abstract. At that time, I was painting abstract style. And I put on the floor during uh, an exhibition of another artist. I did like a cross with all these papers on the floor. But it was nothing uh, like planned, you know what I mean? Like... Just went there, uh, I, I, feel, I felt good, you know, I met many people, you know, this exhibition in the uh, US, it's always a big event, a show with music. Uh, so I, I felt good, so I said, oh, I do this, I don't care, you know, because, and came to the manager, the, the gallerist to me, and I, I thought, wow, this, <laughs> he gonna kick me in the ass, you know, like that. I say, wow, it's interesting your job. I like uh, uh, what you do, actually. Let's talk tomorrow and stuff like this. So I was pretty lucky that he was an artist too, very uncommon galleries. So I got all the contracts and stuff like this. And uh, I went without, uh, without any plan, you know, like uh, just as a uh, wild doors. And they, indeed, now he's passed away. This was a very good person, this gallerist, Bob, Bob Hodge, I think. He told me, look, you were very lucky because at that time, I tell you, it was 10 years ago or maybe more, uh, was every week in New York uh, lending like 30,000 new artists every week to try to find their uh, own space, their own career, uh, you know. So I was pretty lucky that I went there and after a few months I found a gallery that showed my work and just lucky, let's say, you know. But it was great. Uh, New York was the best city I never lived because it's, it's a dream, you know. I did the other exhibition in Bedford Avenue that was in Brooklyn that at that time was a pretty nice area. I, I used to live pretty close there. Yeah, that time was like maybe better than Manhattan. Brooklyn at that time it was very big energy, a lot of people, young artists and uh, studios.
After New York, I went in London as well to live there. And uh, I spent there two years or something like this. Always an artist. Yeah, I always uh, try to be an artist and uh, get contracts around uh, with galleries and try to find a space to show, you know, to display. It was I was still young, full of energy and uh, al always in movement. And actually changing always your place it's even like changing your vision so you get energy from it you have a big energy and uh, i think people around you they can get this energy you know something that uh, goes out of you you know you so you're self-represented now you're selling your art online yeah exactly I, I told you, like, after Prague, after I went in Prague, I start to, to struggling to show, to find a space to show, to exhibit and to sell art because uh, Czech Republic is a still young country, doesn't have a, a properly cultural project at that time. And uh, was maybe maybe they didn't like my style or my attitude i don't know so i switched for this this uh, watercolor style i don't know just for 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 fun i started because i was sketching people in the streets and the metro and uh, i wanted a step forward so i, I bought a cheap watercolor co uh, watercolor start to paint you know and then i I I really like it, you know, the fluidity, the 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 the, the technique in in cells. And then I uh, I don't know for for just for lucky, the, I start to put in the this because I had Sachi since many years. And then I made another profile just for watercolors to uh, do uh, in, like this i didn't mix you know the two styles and uh, i saw that i start to sell with watercolors uh, much more than uh, the my own research and um, <laughs> it was impressive you know in one year i think i sold more than than my the, the other profile that i had since five or more years you know so uh, uh, let's say i still keep doing uh, watercolors for uh, surviving but i don't need it i just do because you know i need sometimes eat and <laughs> buy some, some some clothes or stuff but um, uh, make arts is what let me be alive you know do my research and thinking about what i want to do the day, the day after but making watercolors is always uh, studying the reality but i'm not really uh, interested in reality just a moment Melchior. just the kids coming it's normal uh. <laughs> Opla. Saluta Melchior, right? Ciao Melchior! Ciao! <laughs> Marco is my son, <laughs> the eldest. Uh, I saw you are an artist too. Yeah, I have a studio in the garage. Good. So it's sort of an impressionism. I, I don't know, like you, I, I don't know how to describe it. Yeah, it's pretty hard, I know, I know, I know. But w w what is important, what, what I am seeing now that uh, with all this situation around as well, that uh, that many things they are not important anymore, you know. Because what I'm seeing that we lost the real spirit of human. Like now, for a, a disease, like because I think the 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 problem is from technologies, and I I don't want to be um, stupid, you know. Like I I living thanks to the technologies because I'm selling online and stuff but I think I, if somebody asked me if I, I prefer to live like 30 years ago for sure I, I would prefer to do that because now we are all weak pe persons we don't have this uh, spirit you know this real energy vital one that makes the difference but now we are all in a blob, you know, in a um, strange society contrasting for everything. And we're losing time, you know. We don't feel anymore the, 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 this 
this constantly energy that surrounds us, you know, this, this, that it comes from, I don't know, from whatever, from the stars, from the universe, from the things, from the person. Now we just feel the, the, the cell phones, the computers, and that is a bit the biggest problem now, because now I think now we are in this situation because we are no human being anymore, you know? We are something else. We are uh, a robot with a cell phone in the hand. So we, we're struggling like uh, machines now, you know? We are uh, n n no made by biological uh, structures, but we are, we are a kind of robot with cables and electricity inside. So it's, it's impressive, you know? That is my, my idea, my, 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 can be stupid, naive, but, you know, I believe more in the, in the real spirit of humans. So, so art, I try to, to say that because you said, I don't know how to describe it, but I think now we have to ex describe ourselves for to ex express our our ideas you know it's important time to meet people for this as i accept your um, i don't i didn't know your project or but i was happy because um, we need to to create energy you know behind uh, around us new one fresh one to to start something new yeah very cool actually yes it's uh, I think uh, be an artist for me was like uh, living, you know. I I never split the two things. For this, I tried to to move my myself uh, always to to find new inspirations or, uh, <laughs> but not the mere inspiration. Like I don't know, I woke up one day and say, ah, oh, today I feel good. I want to paint. I want to do something creative. No, the the real one, the inspiration is made by by the life, the, the, to move it, to, to see things, you know, to open your mind uh, 360 degrees, you know. And for this, I was uh, trying to, to make movements in my life, you know. I think movements create energy, and this energy is uh, creative, you know. It's, it's, it's part of the process. I don't know, I, my, my, my vision is like this, is, how I create is because I was travel, not traveling like uh, visitors or uh, a tourist, but living in the city, living as a person, you know, like uh, paying taxes, paying fees, or uh, I don't know, going to the offices, or that was uh, changing many times the point of views. For this, I changed many cities, so now I'm more... <laughs> more calm because I'm living in a house with the three floors. I got the, the base, the basement. So, so I, well, um, Massimo, I, I want to thank you for meeting with me today. Yes. It was a beautiful idea, I think. And I have to say, thank you. It, it was, it's a, yeah, it's exciting to meet new artists and, and look at your different styles and kind of explore what you're about. You yeah. Thank you so much. And Whatever you need, just ask. Every, every channel is an opportunity, you know? You never know what you're going to meet in the, after one second or uh, behind the corner or uh, on Facebook. You don't, you don't know. You know, it's life is magic somehow. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I got to get going and um, let me know when you're on this side of the pond and, and we'll get in touch. Definitely. Definitely, man. Definitely. It was good Thanks to talk a lot. You. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks a lot. Yeah, bye. Take care. Take care. Ciao, Melchior. Ciao, 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 ciao. ciao. Forza, Melchior. Forza, Melchior. Waiting for the miracle <laughs> in, in ordinary life. <laughs>